Hello everyone, my name is Sheridan Plummer of First National Bank and welcome to this week's special edition of First National Bank Notes. Today we bring the curtains down on the final edition of this year's Danny French Education Forum on banking and the marijuana industry. Stay tuned for the details of part four of this very interesting subject in this new 2018 edition of First National Bank Notes. First National Bank says get the home you've always wanted with zero down. That's right. As we celebrate more than 80 years of being here for you as the first indigenous bank, we're giving 80 individuals 100% financing to achieve their dream of home ownership. 100% zero down payment. 100% financing for your dream home. Call or come into First National Bank today and ask about our zero down payment. 100% financing for mortgages. First National Bank, here for you. Under the Money Laundering Prevention Act, I'll just go to under the jurisdiction to try offenses under this act, um, subsection 2. For the purposes of subsection 1, an act or omission committed outside St. Lucia and which would, if committed in St. Lucia, constitute an offense under this act shall be deemed to have been committed in St. Lucia if A, the person committing the act or omission is 1, a citizen of St. Lucia, two, not a citizen of St. Lucia, but is ordinarily resident in St. Lucia, B, the person committing the act or omission is present in St. Lucia and cannot be extradited to a foreign state. Um, yeah, so the, based on the first part, the first part of this that I just read out, if, the, if it is an offense, and the person who has committed the offense is a citizen of St. Lucia, it would be considered an offense. So you tell me- Even if you're not a citizen by birth. Mm. So you're telling me all the talent, brain talent, that we currently have in Canada- I have to stay there. Cannot be brought back to St. Lucia because of the existing laws? That's right. And we have other lawyers in our, in our midst. They, they can you, guide us too, you know. They're not in my office. <laughs> <laughs> this is a recreation of my office. No outside help for you. So Not exactly, eh, Jonathan, because that's not how it was. So, so we, we would need some legislative change. Yes. So, so let me, let me, let me, let me see how we can get to the bottom of something here, because I'm still puzzled. I'm still upset. I cannot believe that that... that I would be considered a money launderer having gone and worked in Antigua and then trying to come back home. Um, so let's look at this one. You have embassies overseas where we, we actively do trade missions. What happens if a lawyer in St. Lucia does work for a company outside of St. Lucia that's affiliated with the industry? How do they get paid? You want to have proceeds of Crime Act again? <laughs> so I'm just showing the audience the broken record. So, Marijuana and the banking industry is not whether you smoke it, it's not whether you grow it, it's not whether, even, it's not even about whether we make it legal in St. Lucia. The fact that it continues to remain as is, the fact that the laws continue to remain as they are, it causes ambiguity. Because I don't agree with anything they said. Okay? But I, I don't even know if that's what it is. I could get a good lawyer that could tell me differently. They could get a lawyer that says something else to support them. But that level of ambiguity is what prevents banks from getting involved in the industry. So people like to think that the most conservative institutions on the planet is probably the church. It's not. 
the most conservative institution on the planet is a bank. And that is what's preventing banks in the United States of America from getting involved in the cannabis industry there. The states, there are about 29, 29 yeah. that have legalized to certain degrees um, what you have. Some have gone medicinal only. Others have gone recreational and medicinal. So 29 have gone ahead. That's more than half. But it continues to remain a federal crime. So banks are afraid, despite receiving guidance from the DEA on how to proceed to bank the industry, despite receiving a FinCEN advisory on how to go ahead and bank the industry, it's vague. It's not clear. It's ambiguous. And there is still a law that says, Jonathan, you can go to jail if you do it. So as conservative banks, they stay away. But what I, what I find a tad ridiculous about the American system, and I'll say it now, marijuana is legal in Washington, D.C. <laughs> OK? So Washington, D.C. is one of the 29 jurisdictions where it is legal. Washington is the seat of federal power for the United States. So you can go, light up and smoke with your senators and your representatives and the lawmakers that are charged with making it legal federally. And it continues to be illegal. And the reason for that is because people aren't ready to exploit the money that marijuana brings. Um, I think that in our, maybe in a year or two, we may see marijuana become federally legal in America. And the sad thing for me is that when that happens, everyone will start talking about making moves to legalize it. But when we try to have discussions around it, it becomes problematic. But again, we're not saying that it needs to be legal. We're just saying, how do we continue to operate when every single time I raise a question to one of you two, the only thing you can tell me is proceeds of crime because it cripples our business. I can't merge and grow this business with a bank in Antigua if they engage in that transaction. I can't merge with a bank in St. Vincent. I want to explain something to the audience that they may not understand. And it's particularly something that impacts indigenous banks. So you want to do a big loan. Massive loan. Well, what's the biggest projects that we have now? So let's say the airport. The airport. Okay. Perfect example. All right. So let's say the airport is a half billion dollar project or a billion dollar project. And banks were supposed to get involved. We would do something called syndications. And syndications means reaching out to sister banks in other jurisdictions to get them to buy into the loan. The largest banks in the Caribbean on a, of an indigenous nature are in places like Jamaica moves into marijuana extract export industry, like Jamaica, NCB Jamaica, like St. Kitts, Nevis, Anguilla National Bank, maybe a couple banks in St. Vincent. So we reach out to these banks to say, let's get together to finance the construction of an airport in St. Lucia. Or let's come together to finance the construction of a much needed hospital in the South. And we are saying that because these banks have marijuana deposits on their books, we cannot have them as partner institutions to help finance a hospital for St. Lucians because of 
proceeds of crime. Yeah? That's what you're going to tell me. Proceeds of crime. It, it's a problem. It prevents us from being parts of these loans. And, and we need to really examine the laws of this country, if necessary, and ask ourselves, how do we continue to do business when friendly governments and sister governments and people that we consider partners are legalizing in theirs? I want to leave something with my two colleagues here. If I would be considered a money launderer, or if I would be denied working in St. Lucia, back in the banking sector, having worked in Antigua or, or, or St. Vincent, how would you define the prime ministers? It's not how we... Yeah, we it's would how, define him. how we would define it's them. It's how our laws tell us we define him. Well, we would have to define so them according to our law. laws. So how would we define them? You can't define them as proceeds from crime. They are not proceeds from crime. So how would you define them? I, I as the diplomats. Lawyer. As diplomats. Yeah. Above the law. <laughs> 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 so the law doesn't apply to them. <laughs> That's why I love my lawyer. <laughs> Right. Well, you know, Jonathan, it would be remiss of me if I did not let the audience know um, that if, as an indigenous bank or any bank, that we um, decided to go to say, well, you know, to help the law, I, I need to do this business because I need to grow my business. It would be remiss of me if I did not say that the, the fines from this is $5 million for the bank. $5 million for me, $5 million for you, yeah. and the both of us are doing jail time. In separate jails. In separate, in separate cells. Yeah. <laughs> okay? No, that, no, no, I think I'll be if the chairman. <laughs> so we, we so, go to the same jail, she goes to a different So one. unless, unless you are advocating officers. that the chairman sends me home because I will not, go contrary to the law, I don't have the $5 million at hand. We will continue to do so and say so. We will continue to exit those relationships that we cannot deal with because that is the only thing to, to help us to continue to survive. Otherwise, we'll be paying $5 million off all the time. I can't do no jail time. It's, it's, it's tough. It, it really is because to be quite honest, no matter how I feel about it, and no matter how ridiculous it, it sounds, Claret is right. And um, we just can't bank the industry. The monies and proceeds are legal in many countries, but when it gets here, it, it is proceeds from crime. But I will tell you this, times are changing, and I think we're living in interesting times. Here we have maybe 75 people on a Saturday morning coming to hear about banking and marijuana, and we had an entire discussion and we didn't even talk about where we could smoke it. <laughs> or if we could plant it. The discussion is real. So whilst we should have discussions around the health benefits, the tax benefits, um, the ills, societal ills and the morality, these conversations are healthy. But what has always been missing is the business side and the banking side and tracking how the money from legal marijuana industry flows through the economies of countries, especially those that continue to keep it illegal or don't make adjustments to their laws. It puts us at significant risk, and sooner or later, actually sooner, maybe October 18th, we will have to ask some serious questions about 
Canadian banks, maybe Air Canada, maybe very soon the OECS Supreme Court, the OECS Secretariat, how contributions from governments move to other governments. It's, it's, it's a serious question. Do governments fund UE? Yes. Yes. Problems. <laughs> Problems. Because I'm telling you this. St. Vincent is going ahead in a big way. Mm -hmm. And you know what's funny? Yesterday at 9.30, St. Kitts, the government of St. Kitts, had a national marijuana symposium where they brought in the former head of the Jamaica Cannabis Licensing Authority. You heard the name? Cannabis Licensing Authority. That's how legal it is over there. You know? They brought this guy in to address the nation in public consultation. You don't do that unless you're getting ready to forge ahead. So St. Kitts goes. And you know what, what, what prominent OECS institution is domiciled in St. Kitts? The central bank. Okay? So these discussions are taking place in St. Kitts. These discussions are taking place in Antigua. These discussions are taking place in St. Vincent. And they are moving ahead. We need to start having some serious legislative discussions in St. Lucia and learn to compartmentalize the earlier discussions that we may have been heard, that may have clouded our judgment, uh, clouded our judgment, eh? um, on whether it's good to smoke, whether it's not good to smoke, whether we can do it under the CDC, at home, wherever. Let's forget about these conversations for a minute and let's focus on the economics. How do we continue to remain viable? Contributions to governments, financial aid, scholarships. Are the Canadian banks operating here legally? Can a Canada continue to airlift people in and out? There are serious ramifications. And as more international countries go, it gets worse if we remain as we are. If France follows Canada, which they very well may, it becomes legal in Martinique as well, and Guadeloupe. And very soon after the midterm elections in the United States, the federal government will be tackling the legalization of marijuana at a federal level in the US. If that comes to fruition, what will happen if we continue to be illegal? And I want people to really leave here with these questions that continue to plague us in my office when we have these conversations about can we do business with? Can we accept deposits from? What happens to these St. Lucians who go work on the farms this year? It's real questions that we need answers to. And the only, re the only real solution appears to be legislative reform. This brings us to the end of today's special edition of First National Banknotes on the annual Stanley French Education Forum. Thank you so much for tuning in and participating in our four-part series on banking and the marijuana industry. It may have been long, but it was definitely worth it. Don't forget that we are open every Saturday morning from 8 a.m. to 12 noon at our various locations. You can view this show again right here every Wednesday on HTS at 8 p.m. or visit us online at www.firstnationalbankonline.com. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm Sheridan Plummer. See you next time. And remember, First National Bank is here for you.